Hello, I am so happy you are here. I know who you are. You are an amazing woman, even if you don't admit it. You are smart, you have high standards, you are loyal to those you love, and you have achieved goals before and have been successful in some areas of your life. But relationships seem to be your Achilles tendon. Perhaps you've been alone for a while. Perhaps your last relationship ended with heartbreak and you are not 100% sure you're ready to try again. I go one step forward. I bet you that inside you, there's two women trapped. One of them is saying, I do want to find love. Even when you were in a painful relationship, a part of you was saying, it has to be easier than this. It's not supposed to be this hard. I believe there has to be love that is relatively effortless, that is painless. And yes, there will always be some challenges, but those challenges are designed for our growth. There has to be the type of love when I not only love, but I also feel cherished, where we respect each other. There has to be love when we bring out the best version of each other. And I also bet there's a different part of you inside that says, ah, it's too hard. I don't even want to try anymore. Maybe this voice is saying, I'm fine. I'm happy the way I am. I don't want a man in my life trashing my, my house. I don't want a man in my life controlling me or telling me what I'm supposed to wear or not or say or not. Take a deep breath. That's perfectly normal. For now, Why do I know that that's going on in your mind? Because I've been there. I'm Dr. Diele Pichardo Johansson, retired physician, life coach, happily married to my soulmate after being happily divorced and best-selling author. And 10 years ago, when the divorce papers were finalized with my ex, I was relieved. It had been a year and a half from the moment I asked for the divorce until he finally signed the papers. I was relieved but also a little scared. See, I had never dated anybody before my ex. I had married the first and last boy I had ever dated and kissed at age 19. But that wasn't the worst part. Here I was, a 38-year-old woman in the horizon, my 40th birthday. I was a divorced mother of four children. Two of them twins with special needs, serious special needs, one of them. I was living in a town where most men around me were either elderly retirees, married engineers, or proudly self-proclaimed rednecks. Not that I had a problem with that, but who would have a chip on their shoulder and would not believe in dating a doctor, a woman who made more money than them or was more educated than them. People around me said, she's never going to find a man. Uh, she may find someone willing to sleep with her. She may find someone willing to take her money, but she's not going to find a man who's going to carry all that baggage. And those were only the external obstacles. The worst part of all was the internal obstacles. See, my previous marriage has been something that at one point of my life, I described as psychologically abusive. And now I prefer to take a more mature and empowered position, but it wasn't easy. A part of me was terrified. A part of me said, I don't want to. I'd ever again have a man in my life who's going to be pathologically jealous, controlling, who's going to forbid me to see 
my friends, who's going to isolate me from my family, who's going to hold me back in my career because he's threatened by my success. I did not want ever again to be in the situation of having to walk on eggshells and having to measure everything I was going to say, not to hurt someone's feelings. I did, I was tired of guilt trips. I was tired of unhealthy codependent relationships. The one dream I had in my life was to be able to read and write, I'm a writer, until the wee hours at night without guilt, without having someone rolling their eyes, huffing and reprimanding me for keeping the, the light on in the room. And if for me to get that, what it took was to be alone for the rest of my life, a part of me was ready to be alone. Right. You may be asking, then why did you even try? Well, because I did recognize that other voice. There was a voice inside me that said, I don't want to die without having known real love. I don't want to die without having that experience of being crazy about someone, loving someone, and having him love me back. So I listened to that voice and I work on in my own healing. And like the Course in Miracles says, our job is not to search for love. Love is everywhere, love is everything. Our job is to remove the barriers we have to receive it and allow it to come into our lives. So there is a funny story that I like to tell my friends about the first time I had a croissant in Paris. You know, you go to Costco here, you go to Walmart, they're always selling croissants everywhere. And I had tried them. Yeah, it's good. It's a little better than bread with butter, but not worth the calories. So I better stay away from croissants. They're not worth it. But one day, after my divorce, I gave myself the gift of a trip to Europe. So I was in Paris and I was on my way to a tour that I had booked and I didn't have much time to grab breakfast. So instead I just stopped in a boulangerie and asked for the quickest thing I could find, which was a cheese croissant sandwich. And I, I asked for that. So I'm running on my way to catch the bus, the hop on, hop off bus for my tour and take my first bite at the croissant. And it was like if a wave, a tsunami of pleasure had hit me on the face. Whoa! I stopped so abruptly my walk that I almost got whiplash. And I had to stumble my way into a bench to sit down and process what a delicious thing this croissant was. I thought I knew what a croissant was. Now I get it. Now I know and why this is worth the calories. Even more, I now know why women, French women are skinny. You don't need a lot of it. It's so delicious. You probably can take a 16th, a tiny portion of it. And it's so flavorful. Every bite is so flavorful that you don't overdo it. You don't hurt yourself. So that is what finding real love feels like. You know, I've not always been this optimistic, cheerful believer in love I am. I was a doctor. I used to believe, oh, love is overrated. Um, it's all chemis chemical changes in your brain, endorphins and oxytocin. It's all glorified physical attraction and animal instinct. Or, or on the other extreme, it's the same exact type of love that I would feel for my brother, my sister, humanity. If, why do we have to invent a different type and call it romantic love? Yes, I was a disbeliever until I found love like that. Love like that croissant. Love that blew my mind away. So someday I will have to tell you the story about the first time I made eye contact with 
Davis or the first coffee date when he blew my mind away telling me, oh, so you're a hematologist. Have you ever stopped and think that the iron in your red blood cells comes from supernovas that were created billions of years ago? That means that you have stardust in your blood. Dude, remember the croissant? Intellectual chemistry was one of the first things that tied me to David. And then immediately after came the emotional chemistry. Talking to this guy was so much fun. He made me laugh every two seconds. I went home with a headache because I had laughed so much, my jaw muscles hurt. I hadn't laughed that hard since my college years. And then there was, there had been that physical chemistry, which at first it was just a little spark when we made eye contact for the first time. And I said, hmm, he's not bad looking. But the most important thing had been the soul chemistry. When I was in that first date, I was having flashbacks of the future. I was remembering this guy from the future. Oh my God, I have seen this laughter before. I have been here before. I know this guy. And they, in our second date, long before he kissed me and I confirmed that physical chemistry, I was thinking, I don't care if there's no physical chemistry. I want to keep dating this guy. I know this guy from somewhere. That can make anyone into a believer. I admit it, yes. But guess what? That's not what made me find him. The most interesting part of life is that the miracles happen because of the faith. You cannot wait to have something to believe that is possible. Only when you believe something is possible, you open the first possibility that it can happen. So how did I take a shortcut? How did I start convincing myself that it was worth it, that love was possible? that I should even try, even get out of my couch and put myself out there. Well, here I'm going to share you the three very subtle mindset adjustments that you can do today. Okay. I want to invite you to take those women inside you, take those doubts that you have and just for the next half an hour, file them in a drawer, just temporarily say, I hear you. I know what you're saying. You are trying to protect me, but let's put you here on this table just for a little while. I will get back to you in a moment and join me as we explore the three steps I took back then to change my mindset from a non-believer in love to a believer. Ready? Let's begin. Number one, to know that it's possible, the first step is to admit that it has happened before. Look around you. Have you ever seen a couple that you say, wow, they really love each other? Wow, they really still have sparked together years and years into the relationship. I know that I someday aspire that my husband and I will be that inspiration for others. We've been together now for 10 years and still feels like a blink. But I hope we are healthy for long enough that 20, 30 years into our relationship, we can continue to inspire people. I want now to tell you a story about that first couple that became my inspiration. They are my uncle Danilo and my aunt Alma. My uncle Danilo and my aunt Alma met in their 20s when they were students in Europe. Back then, my family didn't think they were going to last much because at first they refused to get married. They had these open-minded European ideas. 
Well, they eventually did get married and for everybody's surprise, they have outlived many couples in my family and they are still together. That same European trip I talked to you about, I went to visit my aunt and uncle and I was there visiting them in Rome and blown away because still 30, 35 years later, they were still flirting with each other. They were kissing each other. They were winking. They were uh, checking each other out. They, we were walking on Palatine Hill and there was this flower garden and they were delighted smelling the roses together. Oh, come here, at Danilo. Look, this one is so, smells so good. Come and try it with me. Oh, that's the, look at that. That one is beautiful. They could have fun wherever they were, if they were together. That day, when I saw them smelling the roses at Palatine Hill, after they had been flirting with each other all day, I decided, you know, I want that. It is possible. They are my new proof that love that stands the test of time is possible. And then that inspired me to look around me for all those other success love stories I hadn't noticed before, like my patient, Julia. She was 78 years old and she was in the hospital with a lymphoma, life-threatening spread lymphoma. And I had to make a decision if I had to give her chemo, chemotherapy or not, because she was elderly and frail and I was afraid. And her husband, her 78 year old husband came to me and said, doctor, please do it. Please save her life. I love this woman so much. You have no idea. She's the love of my life. You have to try to save her and don't let her age be what stops you. You see her now at this fragile elderly woman, but I wish you could see her through my eyes. I wish you could see the woman she was when we met, when that wonderful, beautiful, youthful, vibrant 50-year-old woman I fell in love with. That blew my mind. At that time, in my late 30s, I thought that someone at age 50, they were be above and beyond any fairy tale love. And I love to hear that he was this couple who had found each other, fallen in love when they were 50. And they were now still together 28 years later and still talk, he was talking about her with that passion. By the way, Julia got cured from her lymphoma. She, for 10 years after that, she could, and her husband continued to come to my oncology office as in love and as comfortable with each other as they have always been. I even made them dance in some of the uh, office parties. And eventually, about 10 years later, I'd say, okay, you don't have to come anymore. You're 88 now. <laughs> I think that the lymphoma is not go going to be what gets you. So as of the last time I saw them, they were still together and in love. And that's only one of the stories I started seeing around me. Haven't we all met those couples who seem to have dialed some combination so they are now smoothly like pieces of a puzzle fitting together? Have you met couples like that that seem to be in love? And even if they have had their challenges in life, they are still together. They are still enjoying each other's company. That is your homework, number one. Make a list of at least three couples you know that are your inspiration, that can become your role model. It can be couples you really know. It can be couples in the media. Call the Hound and Carl Russell as are a couple that I admire. They're in their 70s. They have been together for over 35 years or 40 years. They have survived Hollywood and you can still see they are happy all those years later. Think about couples that you can decide these are my role models and they don't have to be couples that have lasted forever. 
can be couples that at this moment represent the degree of mutual respect, healthy boundaries, joyful rituals, whatever it is that make them your inspiration. So the mindset number one was look for role models. Look for those couples around you that prove to you that love that stands the test of time is possible. But I have news for you. You already have had in your life love that stands the test of time. My sister Natalie and I were the typical sisters when we were growing up. We loved each other with passion and we wanted to kill each other. We pulled each other's hair. We scratched each other. We engaged in slap fights. But then we would reconcile and play for hours with our dolls. No matter how much we had fought, we always ended up reconciling. And the same pattern continues all over our lives. Every time one of us disappointed the other, or every time we clashed because as an adult, we had acquired different beliefs and different views of life. Still, the love and the history we had shared together in, un, unavoidably brought us back together. And I can certainly say that at this moment in my life, I. No matter what my sister Natalie would do, I, she would never lose me. I am her champion. She is my champion. We are each other's biggest fans. And I just thought, hmm, can I do that again? Can I find someone at this stage of my life who I love so much and I enjoy so much spending time with? Maybe someone who has that soul chemistry that like, like it happened with my sister, Natalie, that it becomes a positive feedback loop. The more time we spend together, the more positive memories we accumulate and the stronger our bond is. So it can resist any challenge. And decades from today, we can still be each other's biggest fan. Don't we all have people like that in our lives? people who have stood the test of time, who have a, people who we haven't probably seen in years, but when we get together, it's like time never went by. Friends that are linked to the happiest memories of our youth and our life. I invite you to look around you and find those people. Who are those people in your life who you know now they are there to stay, that nothing that could happen can break you apart from them because you have history with them because you are each other's champion maybe a sibling maybe an adult child that now you have history with them for all their lives maybe it's a friend from high school or college maybe someone you met not that long ago but that you already have a special bond with which by the way, take us to the third mindset change. You don't need too much time to love someone. Let me tell you another story. Back then in that time, when I was struggling with the decision of the divorce, I was so ashamed of disappointing my parents, becoming a divorced woman, something that in my family, in my culture was a taboo. And I had hidden in my office bathroom to cry. I, in my lunch break, I was crying. I was feeling the weight of my overwhelm. And then after a good cry, I washed my face, reapplied my makeup, braced myself and went to see my first patient in the afternoon. I'll call him John. He was a 78-year-old patient with metastatic esophageal cancer. And I entered this examination room and he smiled at me and I was blown away. The most beautiful smile I had seen in my life. 
just that smile immediately it's like it was like cpr like an electric show oh, rebooted my day and i was immediately feeling lighter happier it was love at first sight if it hadn't been because he was 30 years older than me and had a life-threatening illness i would have said i need love if this guy tells me let's run away and elope i would he was one of the examples in my life of soulmate love. I loved that man for every day I took care of him until he eventually passed. I know now that John was sent into my life for that message to prove to me that love at first sight existed. Remember that skeptical doctor I talked to you about? I used to be a big skeptical of love at first sight, obviously is just lost. He had come to my life to prove to me that there are some souls that we have met before our birth that we can instantly fall in love with someone. That there are people that are, have made covenants with us to be our companions through life. And he's not the only one. I am convinced my sister Natalie is one of those too. My sister Liliana too. I know that there's a friend in my life, my friend Elizabeth, she's 10 years younger than me. She's from a completely different culture of bringing. She's, she is a very different person. And yet we were put together as roommates in an oncology conference once and we clicked instantly. It was like I had known her all my life. It was like she had been my friend since the crib. We would talk until 3 a.m. every day and did not need sleep. And even decades later, we are still the type of friends that we may sp it may be years since we talk to each other. And when we get together, that connection starts immediately again. Don't we all have those stories? Don't we all have those friends who maybe now they have stood the test of time but at one point even before we knew who we, they were even before we knew we had if we had anything in common with that with them we clicked we knew you know i know you from somewhere so i invite you to look around in your life can you come up with at least one person in your life could be a previous love could be a friend could be a relative that you know you know what, this is a special soul. This is someone that I have a bond that cannot be explained by the physical body. Those are our soulmates. And yes, we do have soulmates, many soulmates throughout our lives. So why is it so hard to think that we can find one soulmate that can also have the other chemistries the physical chemistry, the intellectual and emotional chemistry. So can, that person can be the person who spends the rest of our lives with us. Do you want to hear some good news? Those four chemistries I talk about, they are what makes sure that this time things are different. That the person you get together with, you are with them for the right reason that they are the person that blows your mind away. And do you know what is, what cements and glues that person so this time is forever? When you combine those chemistries with the same values. I am so grateful right now that I was able to find that type of love. In the 10 years that David and I have been together, not only he has embraced my children as his own and helped me raise them, I am convinced that those children and him were destined to be in each other's lives. They love each other. He has been a tremendous influence on my kids with special needs. But not only that, we have traveled all over Europe. He inspired me to go back writing. We have lived a life that I could not have imagined in my wildest dreams. I feel I died and reincarnated in a new life. Do you remember that story about 
all I wanted was to be able to read and be free to read and write without someone complaining that I had to turn the light off. Not long ago, a few years ago, I there was a moment that happened that reminded me of why David was worth the wait. I was reading, I was engrossed in my book. I, it was a paper book, it was not one of the electronic ones. And I was feeling a little guilty that my light was on. And I said, oh, sorry, sweetie, that my light is on. And he said, oh, don't worry, sweetie. Oh, do I love reading? Do I know how great it is to read? Take your time. He reached out in his nightstand. He grabbed this mask, covered his eyes, kissed him goodnight, and went right back to sleep. And I said, yes, this is love. He gets me. He knows how much I love reading. And he, he is an adult who can fulfill his own needs. He can take care of his own needs and not rely on me to make him happy. I am so grateful that he's in my life. Do you want to know another moment in my life when I was really grateful about having taken a risk and accepted David in my life? Well, about three years ago now, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. The day of my surgery, they found a surprise. They found a second cancer far away from the first one. They assumed that I had metastatic cancer. Long story short, eventually that was refuted, but can you imagine? I was an oncologist. I knew what that meant. And I was, I spent the whole night in a recliner because I had just had my lateral mastectomies. I couldn't even lie in bed, torturing myself. Oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I have it more, at most a couple of years to live. If I'm lucky, three years to live. Oh my God. And do you know what was the first thing that came to my mind. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you because I left the ex. Thank you because I said yes to my husband, David. Thank you because for the past seven years, I had traveled to Europe so many times with him. I was inspired to go back writing. I published all these books. Thank you because I did do it. Even if I die now, I did know love the way I always knew love was supposed to be. Thank God that was a mistake. Thank God it's not true that I only have a few years to live. It has been almost three years. Obviously it was wrong. But I want to invite you to remember that. Life is too short. We cannot postpone our happiness forever. Because we never know when life's going to be over. All we can do is to take this instant, this moment, and make the best out of it. Yes, there may be heartbreak on the way. Yes, there may be some stumbles in the way. But I guarantee you, if the person you choose in your life is that type of love that has the four chemistries, not only physical chemistry, but also spiritual, soul chemistry, intellectual chemistry, emotional chemistry. That is someone worth a heartbreak. And I also promise you that if that person also shares your deeper values, is someone that has a hell lot of a good chance of staying in your life, of becoming one of those people who are in your life forever. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share this video with other women who may need to hear this message. And if you really want to take it to the next step, email me. I will be happy to spend some one-in-one -one time with you. I am looking for women interested in self-development who are tired of codependency. They are ready to be self-empowered and they want love that makes them the best version of themselves. I, I'm looking for women who may or may not be sure they are ready, but they definitely know they want to use this time alone for growth. By the end of this coaching series, this group, you are going to have crystal clarity on what you want in your life and 
that is going to be the beginning for you not to settle for less. You are going to have found resources and tools you didn't even know you have in order to tackle the doubts and blocks you didn't even know you have. You are going to learn an authenticity and integrity approach so the love you attract to your life this time is the right one and is the one that can stay. But most importantly, you are going to get to know yourself a lot better and fall in love with yourself. Are you interested in learning more? Do you know someone who would be interested in learning more? Share this video, share this page, and email me. I will be delighted to have a conversation with you one-on-one -on -one or invite you to this exclusive pilot coaching group where in addition to have these tools, you'll also have the support of other women going through the same journey. I invite you to do something different if you want a different result in your life.